What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to build a 5 flex or a 6 flex slip here on prize picks utilizing market data and comparing it directly to prize picks projections. The reason why we always compare market projections and market data is because we try to find the value on prize picks. We know that prize picks is a DFS app. Therefore, they're a little bit slower. They fall asleep at the wheel just a little bit more often than these other uh, these other sports books or DFS apps because there's not as much action on the DFS app as opposed to the sports book. So again, I will always preach this because the market data will always, always adjust a lot quicker than these DFS apps. And if we catch them falling asleep, then we can take advantage of these projections. So ironically, we just added esports here a couple days ago for both CSGO props and League of Legends. What we're able to do is compare this directly to sports books and also on underdog. So if we take a look here on the left side, you see the prize picks projections. We're able to compare the prize picks projections along with um, some of the sports books like Betano, who also provides League of Legends props. We also can compare them to Bovada and Bet Online when they are available. They're not as often available there on the sports books, um, but on Betano, they're always available, which is pretty cool. And then also comparing it directly to Underdog. So the mindset behind this is to compare these League of Legends props directly to these other these these two other books. If we do find the middle point, we can assume that that is the most accurate projection, right? You take point A, you take point B, and if they both are considered accurate sportsbooks or DFS apps, then the projection is assumed to be somewhere in the middle. So let's actually talk about this and talk through this real quickly. So on Betano, you can see that their sportsbook line, we're, we're looking at Cerdas uh, from Team SK. If you guys know League of Legends, I don't. I just know that Market Data is providing a huge opportunity here. We see that Certus' kills are set to 3.5 on Betano, and the overjuice line is set to minus 143. Like, that is a lot. You're getting penalized for hitting the over on this 3.5 line, like, drastically. But on the flip side, if we actually take a look, if we take a look here at his underline at 3.5, you're getting that at plus 105. So if you hit the under at plus 105 at the 3.5 line on Betano, you're getting $105 back for a $100 bet on Betano. And what this does is it creates a middling opportunity. So let's say I hit the over on prize picks at three, and I also hit the under at three and a half here on Betano at plus 105. If this projection lands on three, I technically win both bets. Yes, it's considered a push on prize picks, but if you're still able to go through your slip, and if that's one of your one of your legs down, then you can potentially win that slip while also winning the huge bet on Betano. And I'm not here to preach that you should always middle here, but what I'm saying is that there's such a huge discrepancy with these two sportsbooks and DFS apps that you can take advantage of this middling opportunity, but also be taking advantage of one side while trusting the market data here from Betano. And also keep in mind, if we're playing Certus in a five flex slip or a six flex slip, we're looking at minus 118, minus 119 implied odds. It's somewhere in between that mark. And if you're getting that three projection at minus 119 opposed to the over at three and a half, which is a lot higher in terms of, of a kill count at minus 143, that's a huge jump. You're getting a huge discount here at three at minus 119 juice. So as you can see here, we're getting a huge discount. We're going to go ahead, go ahead and throw him into a, our slip here. And that's awkward. He just got bumped. So as you can see here, the market is adjusting. So we're going to go ahead and give us a refresh and start fresh. But the same concept applies for all these plays here down the board. And just goes to show you how efficient the market can be and how quickly it does adjust even in esports. So let's go ahead and throw Adam here. As you can see here, it's a two and a half kill Kill projection here on the sportsbook line and on prize picks. You're getting him at minus 154 on Betano, where you can get him at minus 119 implied odds on prize picks, which is a huge, huge discrepancy. So let's go ahead and put Adam in our five flex slip. Reckless is another great person to throw in here. It looks like the under at three and a half. Um, his underline at two and a half is at the minus 118 implied odds, which is fantastic to directly compare because you can get the 0.5 more aggressive line here on prize picks at that exact same juice. So you're securing that push potential, plus you're getting him at minus 118 implied odds. And now let's take a look at Aloya from Mad. Aloya. And it says to hit the under here at two and a half. So if we compare his line directly, his line is set to one and a half kills here on the under at plus 142. Now that's not favoring the under. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into this. As you can see, the over at one and a half is set to minus 200. However, we're getting a full one kill discrepancy, which can change the entire landscape at two and a half here. So as you can see, prize picks is basically saying at two and a half, his implied odds should be at minus 140, 148 on the under. And at 1.5 kills, it's at 
200 minus 200 on the over. So that projection is still somewhere in the middle. Again, we're using the middling opportunity here of the, of the sportsbook and DFS app. So according to both these projections, we're saying that his kill count should really be somewhere in between one and a half and two and a half. We can get his under at two and a half here on prize picks. Next is going to be Patrick here set to four kills on prize picks. He's set to three and a half here, minus 118 implied odds. So again, you're getting that 0.5 discrepancy on prize picks. Fantastic value. Patrick under. And then last but not least, Yike, or I guess that's how you pronounce his name, Yike here from G2. Uh, the exact same situation here. You get his kill count at four, set to three and a half, minus 147 odds, minus 118. The exact same situation we have here with Patrick. And that is literally it, guys. As you can see here, we conducted a five flex prize pick slip. Um, took the implied odds all the way down here. Um, anything 55% plus, I usually preach on being plus EV here for five flex slips. It's technically down to 54.34, but I like to give myself a little bit of a buffer in case these lines do move a little bit to ensure that my overall slip, the average leg percentage is 55% plus so that it is guaranteed to be plus EV. So let's go ahead and say that my average legs here, as you can see, it looks to be around 55.5-ish. We'll go ahead and throw that into our calculator here. And this is saying that my plus EV percentage is set to 0 0.84 ROI, while my projected profit, anything that is gonna end in a uh, four out of five or five out of five is projected to be 26.38%. In order to break even, um, it needs to, to come out profitable about 24.65% of the time. So it looks like by achieving that fair odds percentage of 55.5%, this slip will remain profitable in the long run. 